Andrew Donchez, Tribute Speech. How do you describe a man who never took a day off for 15 years, despite more injuries and wounds than most humans could even fathom? How do you describe a man who, despite being one of the greatest and most skilled men to ever enter his profession, was a model of humility? How do you describe a man who, while staring in the face of death, continued to work and inspire all? For 70 years now, Millions of Americans have been searching for one word to describe Lou Gehrig, yet every last challenger has failed. Not one word alone befits the great Gehrig, a legendary first baseman for the New York Yankees during the 1920s and 1930s. True, Lou Gehrig hit nearly 500 home runs, knocked in more runs than any other first baseman, and is baseball's king in career grand slams. Yet, no one seems to remember too much about Lou Gehrig's playing career. Rather. America has admired Gehrig for his persistence, humility, and courage. Gehrig was the prototypical American, a man who never veered off the path he set out for himself, a man who never looked back the road not taken. He sits atop Mount Olympus, an immortal who has no equal. Perhaps that is why we cannot singularly describe him. A god is not subject to mortal words. Only a select few have merely approached Lou Gehrig's perseverance in the nearly 70 years since his death. From June 2nd, 1925 to May 2nd, 1939, Gehrig played in 2,130 consecutive games, a record that stood for nearly 60 years and gave him the perfect nickname, Iron Horse. Through back pains, concussions, fractures throughout his body, and the beginning stages of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, also known as ALS, Gehrig refused to miss a single game. He always played the American way, giving his all and ignoring the injuries that plagued him. Jim Murray of the Los Angeles Times once wrote that Gehrig was a symbol of indestructibility. George Selkirk, a teammate of Gehrig's, once said that Gehrig seemed so durable many of us thought he could have played forever. Indeed, had Gehrig's career not been cut short by ALS, no one knows how long he would have continued to play and shatter records all the while remaining his unassuming self. Lou Gehrig, despite his wealth and status as star player in New York's grandest city, was always the impoverished German kid from Manhattan. He did not fit the mold of a typical superstar, constantly clashing with teammates and coaches. He did not don expensive suits, lead massive, lead massive posses, or attend one of New York's main nightclubs. Rather, he showed up at the ballpark Played the game, and then returned home to his wife. Joe McCarthy, Gehrig's manager, once said, I had him for over eight years, and he never gave me a moment's trouble. Sam Jones, a teammate, best summed up the Iron Horse's good nature. Lou was the kind of boy that, if you had a son, he's the kind of person you'd like your son to be. How remarkable. A man who played a game that participants have always been marred by its greed and corruption, was chosen as the ultimate role model. However, even greater than Gehrig's humility was his valor. Lou Gehrig's legacy did not end once his body was invaded by ALS. Rather, his legacy had just begun. At the beginning of the 1939 season, Gehrig had lost almost all abilities as a baseball player. James Kahn of the New York Sun reported on, on April 24, 1939, there's something wrong with him. I've seen players come and go, as Gehrig seems to have done, but they were simply washed up as ball players. There's something much deeper. That something was ALS. Despite the terrible pain and humiliation that Gehrig experienced, he continued to play until May 2nd, 1939, when he realized that he was no longer capable of playing the game that he truly loved. Gehrig had played his final game, but he had not given up on life. July 4th was declared Lou Gehrig Day at Yankee Stadium when he uttered these now famous words in front of tens of thousands of fans. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Gehrig then concluded his speech by saying, And I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. It is this speech, more than anything else, that has made Gehrig an American hero, a man whose life was being taken away an unknown ailment was telling people how great his life had been. 
When Lou Gehrig had every right to complain like everyone else would have, he did the opposite. Although he had one of baseball's great skill sets, Lou Gehrig's character was even greater. Few, if any, have ever been as persistent, down-to-earth, and courageous as the Iron Horse. His story provides us Americans with the hero we are always seeking, the consummate role model that seems ever elusive. And as we continue in our search to find that one word that describes Lou Gehrig, perhaps Gehrig is the word that should be used to describe those who approach him on Mount Olympus.